Welcome everybody. In this video I'll be installing Cinnamon 1.2 on Arch Linux. Now this is going to be actually a quick and dirty video. Um, as you can see right here I have already installed um, the Devel, uh, developer tools and uh, and yogurt, yogurt, yogurt to um, install uh, items from the Arch user repository and uh, you can see I'm already in the process of installing the packages. Now this video is going to run a little bit long. Usually my videos are 15 minutes. I mean, I'm sorry, 5 minutes. But uh, this one's going to run about 15 minutes. So if you don't want to listen to me babble, uh, you could go ahead and mute. I'll add some annotations to the video as well as uh, information in the description so that you can have an idea of uh, what's going on, what I'm doing on the screen. Uh, since I'm screencasting and uh, speaking over the uh, process as I watch it back, um, I might ramble. I've already started rambling and I'll ramble on a little bit more. Now currently, uh, I might as well talk about the system that I currently have running on the video here. This is uh, XFCE. I made some uh, nice changes to uh, the default look and feel of it. You can see I've got Conky running in the background. Now, um, at this point, I have terminal full screened and you'd be like, well, hey, cool. Um, How did you get Conky to show up? and still have the uh, pane full screen. Well, basically I just created a, uh, a second panel at the bottom and made it uh, transparent. So I could see Conky running um, no matter what I'm doing, which is actually really cool because I could see which uh, processes are running and uh, how much RAM I'm using at any given moment. Um, Now, if you haven't noticed already, the uh, downloads are actually a little quick. I didn't speed this up, but I do have a pretty good uh, system running here. I'm running this on an i5-2500K that I built um, in August of 2011. It's a desktop computer. I don't have it overclocked. Um, I have a pretty fast internet connection, so um, the uh, entire process took me... I don't know. Um, well, by the end of this segment, you'll see how long it took for the downloads. Now, I have to give credit to Infinitely Galactic and uh, Linux Battery for um, inspiring me to uh, look a little bit further into Arch Linux. Usually, I just install a few uh, desktop environments and and uh, window managers and fiddle around on these videos, do a quick preview, and, and then I'm done. But uh, after watching Infinitely Galactic go through and uh, access some stuff from the Arch user repository, um, which I actually did last night, and uh, installed one of my uh, favorite uh, music players, XL, which isn't available in the uh, regular Arch repositories. Okay. At the, oh, hey, look, cool. That's awesome. I um, am done at this point, and we'll move on to double checking. Um, last night, when I was installing a few uh, applications from the repository, it would uh, it would basically stall on me. So I took the time here to make sure. Okay, at this point, I have logged out and logged back in. And you can see that uh, since I'm on Arch Linux, uh, it's it's very bare. Um, Cinnamon did install uh, a large portion of GNOME um, 3 or GNOME Shell, but uh, you can see that there is no theme. Now I did have XFCE running already, so the system is mostly functional because of what I had done with XFCE a few weeks back. 
but as you can see um, anything that's a GTK3 um, hasn't loaded because it simply doesn't exist so right here I'm just loading a few web browsers uh, web I'm sorry I believe this is a uh, Firefox and uh, I went to uh, the LA Times and then the BBC now I did use um, XVidCap to capture this video and as you'll see later on in this video uh, it does get very uh, uh, artifacty as you can see right here as I'm going through the menu items um, the the environment isn't artifacty at all in fact it's very responsive but um, the screen capture for whatever reason isn't very uh, very good I actually have run into the same problem with uh, GNOME 3 and GNOME Shell now right here I'm actually trying to see if I could select a desktop um, this is my first time looking at the system so I honestly had no idea what I'm doing uh, at the time of me recording this audio, I have just finished installing it, played around with it, edited the video in um, OpenShot, which um, if it was a little bit more stable, I would love. But it is very easy to use, and uh, so I keep using it, hoping that it will become more stable and just remembering to uh, save um, every time I make a, a cut or an edit, simply because um, it will... Um, stall on me and uh, or crash unexpectedly now you can see I actually am <laughs> fiddling around it's been a uh, at least several weeks since I was using GNOME 3 and um, I'm fiddling around with uh, moving the window back and forth and you can see the screen refresh on the video is not too good um, but the uh, moving the window from left to right from uh, desktop to desktop is just like in GNOME Shell. You uh, hold down shift and hit left or right. Of course GNOME Shell does up and down, but uh, this works left and right. And um, as you'll see later on, it creates a new desktop every time you open a window in an, um, an empty desktop. Um, at this point I do have my terminal full screened for anyone wanting to watch the process of me download GNOME uh, the reason I did this was, uh, obviously, it didn't include any of the themes or, and the defa default themes. So, um, at this point, I added it and will be uh, logging out. I figure uh, later on I can remove some of the packages I don't want, like the Epiphany browser. Um, at this point, I'm uh, loading LibreOffice, and I've actually noticed this as a glitch in GNOME uh, 3 as well, as when I open it up, it just, you know, does this crazy artifacty thing. You can see that it's opened up another desktop there, opening up a text document. Boom. And it looks like I've finished uh, downloading GNOME. Okay, so at this point I've uh, logged out and back in and you can see the uh, default GNOME uh, wallpaper has showed up. The uh, close, maximize, and minimize windows, uh, I'm sorry, icons are there. Uh, Firefox has now been themed towards the uh, generic GNOME theme. And um, I'm actually exploring the system here. I just uh, opened up Excel, which I installed last night. Again, um, I'm not using a microphone here, so you won't hear the music playing, but in fact, it does function. Kind of a cool little uh, open and close effect there. I was expecting to see some more theme uh, information there, but ha didn't see anything. Now this actually adds little um, applets to the um, panel. So now I can look at the trash barrel, um, removable drives, display uh, settings. 
again, it's um, it's artifacty. So it's extremely responsive, uh, unless of course you're doing a screen capture. Now this is cool. It gives you um, options. You could change the name of the menu. Whoops, I'm sorry. I flipped forward. You could change some of the uh, the effects. Um, nothing spectacular, but uh, but you know a lot of the stuff that you would expect. I'm a big fan of how this uh, menu system works. It's um, by no surprise just like uh, Linux Mint because the Linux Mint developers uh, created Cinnamon and uh, in response to uh, basically Ubuntu users and other GNOME users that were complaining about uh, the non-traditional layout that everyone loved in GNOME 2. Now you would think the uh, GNOME developers would say, hey, okay, um, we'll, we will, uh, you know, create a patch so you guys can theme this as you like it, but um, they never did. So uh, the guys at uh, Linux Mint did the work for us. And you can see we still, you still have this, um, um, I guess you can call it a lens or activities area up top here. Now at this point I'm kind of confused and wondering why I'm not seeing anything, but really it just uh, it works like uh, like spaces on a Mac. Um, you just uh, it will show the uh, the windows that are open. I'm hoping um, everyone takes uh, a little bit from this video. Um, aside from my randomness and rambling, uh, I wanted to give people an idea of what uh, Cinnamon 1.2 looks like on Arch Linux. Um, as you know, Arch Linux is uh, a very minimalist distribution, so that would account for um, having to make a, a a lot of these changes uh, manually um, to the theme. Now I decided to go check out GNOME Look and see if I can um, add one of my favorite uh, themes to the system. Um, at this point I had uh, <clears throat> added nothing. It's just the generic uh, ugly GNOME uh, manila folders and really dated looking uh, appearance. I think I'd be doing everyone a favor if I just be quiet when I have nothing to add to the one-way conversation right here. So I thought maybe um, there would be a nice neat way to import it, but uh, no. You'll notice in this portion of the video I'm kind of getting confused. I'm typing in file roller and looking for um, the application. <laughs> now I see it as I'm watching this over where archive manager is sitting there right in front of my face. <laughs> Now what I really did like about uh, Cinnamon and uh, after uh, playing with it during the editing process is that it seems just as responsive if not more responsive than Gnome Shell. Um, maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part, but this is a really great blend between the uh, traditional Gnome environment that you would now get in, um, I believe it's called Mate. or uh, XFCE, um, if you're using XFCE, which I actually uh, switched to as my prov um, 
primary environment. And um, sorry that the uh, the pa this panel is so artifacty. Um, what I was doing there was surf surfing through all the applications to see what would happen there. Um, and here I am uh, opening what I had downloaded earlier. You might want to skip ahead if you've already uh, themed a uh, GNOME environment or any environment before. Um, and I'll have some notes in the description um, about how I installed um, Cinnamon. Later on, uh, probably a week from now, I'll do a five minute uh, distribution preview, which is usually my traditional method of showing stuff off. But what I found uh, over the last couple weeks, now that Cinnamon 1.2 is out, that um, nobody really uh, tried it out yet on uh, Arch Linux. I'm sure there are videos out there, far better than this one, um, where you can preview it. So um, I wanted to take the time to uh, go from the uh, installation process to uh, beginning the theming process, post that onto YouTube and hopefully inspire people to do a far better job of uh, theming and tweaking out uh, cinnamon than I am doing here. And again, I apologize for the uh, the really boring view of me going through files and files and files. You can see that this is uh, my screen captures right there. At this point, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> now, if you're interested in um, watching any of my other videos, uh, feel free to uh, subscribe. Um, if you actually enjoyed this um, boring tirade of me uh, giving a really lousy play-by-play -play of the installation process, uh, go ahead and thumbs up the video. Um, if you didn't like it, eh, don't thumbs down it, um, please. But uh, you could just not react. Heck, you know what? If you hated it, thumbs down it. I don't care. I have a feeling only maybe 10 people will be watching this anyway, especially after sitting through uh, 18 minutes of it so far. Okay, at this point I'm trying to remember how to spell Nautilus so that I can open it up as a super user. Um, the reason I'm doing this is that I've already uh, extracted my theme files and will now drop it into um, the user share theme folder. Boom, or actually themes. Now you can see I have a ton of themes. Uh, XFCE does actually install a lot of themes um, by default. I've also installed a few others. All right. Checking to make sure everything shows up properly. I didn't want to uh, have any um, compressed files in there. So this is where I log out of the system. Looks like I forgot to um, cut the video at this point. Hoping in vain that the theme would show up somewhere in these panes and um, it didn't. So while we watch me wander around and wait to um, log out 
and log back in. Um, might as well tell you everyone why I started using Arch Linux. Well, I started with Ubuntu and uh, for about six months kind of learned the, uh, the basics of uh, using Linux and getting used to the um, existence of uh, Linux. Then um, heard about Linux Mint from uh, a few YouTube channels. Installed that, used that for about three months. Uh, this is actually, uh, I started using Linux right in uh, early 2009. Okay, at this point I decided to install GNOME Tweak in the hopes that it will uh, give me some more features. And in fact, it does work, except for the shell extensions portion. Now, um, so you'll see me uh, menu through here as I, uh, discover that I could use it to um, display and hide the same stuff you would do in um, GNOME Shell. Now, um, of course it is artifacty. The computer home and trash folder did in fact disappear, but because it's not refreshing on the screen capture you won't be able to see that. Eventually I realized that I can go through and uh, <laughs> select the icon theme. As well as the uh, window theme. Now I was expecting actually some little uh, circles to pop up in the place of the X minimize and maximize um, buttons. That's what that's how um, the Zook Itwo um, theme works in uh, GNOME Shell. Now I suspect that if I log in to GNOME now that I have it installed, I can probably uh, change it there and there is a possibility that changing it there will also change it here. So back to my random conversation about uh, Arch Linux. I actually uh, had heard about Arch Linux while following uh, Oh My God Ubuntu's uh, Twitter feed and somebody mentioned uh, Arch Linux and uh, in a joke about um, and said, yeah, I'm gonna stop you right there, but Arch Linux is the best uh, distribution distribution ever. And uh, I'm like, oh, what's that? That sounds cool. So um, I tried to install it several times. Being a Linux noob, it was kind of a, uh, a rough process. But um, I stuck in there and actually started reading the documentation. And that's one of the great things about um, Arch Linux is their documentation is, is uh, amazing. It's well organized. It's very succinct. And um, the forums are extremely uh, useful as well. Um, one time I had asked somebody about why uh, I think my um, MP3 files weren't playing in um, Amarok, but for some reason they would play in VLC and it just turned out that I didn't have um, some packages installed that were suggested with the, uh, the package. Now you can see I've got my uh, Tumblr open, Linux Book Pro. Still fiddling around with GNOME Tweak, hoping that the, uh, the circular icons will show up. So uh, once I finally got uh, Arch Linux installed, uh, probably around uh, 2011, early 2011, successfully, um, I was pretty much hooked. And uh, it didn't take long for me to discover that it was very easy to uh, install multiple desktop environments, which, you know, would fit my mood at a given moment. Hey, if I wanted to use XFCE, I could use XFCE. I mean, of course, you could do that with any distribution. but. Um, the minimalist nature 
of Arch Linux was great because once I got used to adding um, packages, uh, you know, I could add only what I wanted. No need to add stuff that I will never use. And here's my desktop. Thanks for watching.